So ideally you would get a performance that is absolutely in the pocket. If you're happy with the performance, but there are bits that aren't in the pocket, then the producer will do the adjustments and they can be done in several ways, including if you really, if your vocal really needs a lot of help, then you can put it in flex time. Um, well, okay, now I'm not going to do it now because I need to uh, flatten it. But um, you you would put it, you would flex time it and then move the transient yourself, or you can you, you can even chop it up and move whatever bit of it isn't isn't in time. The same way as you would use. Um, Melodyne to tune a vocal that isn't perfect but that is your last resort first you want to get a performance that is completely in the pocket um, finding a vocalist um, I have I've been very lucky because being a musician I come across so many musicians but honestly finding a vocalist, as long as you're proactive, you can find them everywhere. And I'll give you an example um, of how I found one of my favorite collaborators, um, a singer and rapper called Tamina, who, with, who has, she has a lot of um, Middle Eastern influences in her singing, and she's an amazing rapper. And the way I found her was by getting into a conversation with an Uber driver when I was on my way home from a gig on New Year's Eve. I was playing at pop stars, DJing, and we got chatting. And then he gave me this vocalist's phone number and I contacted her. So really, vocalists can be found in all sorts of places, but I've made a, a, a list of uh, less random places where you can find them, live open mic sec sessions. Um, there's vocal agencies online that you can go to to find vocalists. Um, for instance, there's um, hobsonsinternational.com. I'm going to give all the, all the links to um, Helen afterwards to post in the Facebook group. Um, also, the musicians credits of tracks that you like, because you might, if you, you know, depending on what stage you're at, um, they might be interested in working with you, um, the, the vocalists, I mean. Um, also, Instagram. Instagram is a fantastic place to find vocalists, um, especially if you follow the right hashtags. Um, so singing, I like vocal groups, so um, a cappella hashtag and um, vocal harmony, those are very, very good places to find vocalists. Um, and finally, ask your friends, ask DJs, join forums, place ads in rehearsal studios. There's so many ways of finding them. Okay, so... Um, you when you're harmonizing it's not about what keys you use it's um what key you're in in the song so um let's get the piano back up um and this is you know it's such a massive massive um subject uh, and it depends on how much you know about keys but um the key you can see that that as the flavor of the of the song so you know it could be your it, it could be your peach flavored song or you have a song that is banana flavored that is that is the key or you know you've got a pizza flavored song um each key has its flavor minor keys tend to be a little bit darker than the major keys um so for instance my, a minor 
is the relative minor of C major. Which is much happier. A minor. It's more melancholy. Um, in order to harmonize with something, you need to know what key you're in. Um, either you know it because you, because you know your musical theory or you have to use your ear. Um, I tend to use a little bit of both uh, because sometimes I, I know exactly, I mean, I, I know what key I'm in and I know what notes I want to use, but if I want to do something a little bit more accurate and interesting, I, I might double check it on the piano. Uh, but then again, it, it very much depends. Um, if I'm in my in my in um, in the medium that I feel comfortable in, I I will usually just do it by ear. But um, so it's not about what key you use, but it's about whether or not you use your ear or you use musical theory or you use both. Ideally. As I said, you would use both. Um, you would look at the notes that are available to you again and again and again and again. And, again. Um, and then, if you know how to play a melody on the piano, um, this was the melody that I sang first. Oops. And initially, I wanted to, to start the first harmony just very close to the top note. And that didn't work because it's not the, it's not the right genre for that. So I then went a third down from that. And this is something that if you guys are interested in, we can go into intervals i mean it's it's such an, a massive 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 subject that it, it's going to blow your minds open if if you if you learn it it's just going to give you so much ammunition and it's gonna i believe that it's gonna make your creativity explode but there's quite a lot of studying not studying but there's yeah there's a bit of studying involved um, so, this is the first, th this is the melody, and this is the, the harm first harmony that I've played, so let me try and play them together. As you can see, these are all notes that belong to the chord because this chord this scale and chord which is the key of the song it uses all of the white notes and you can use literally all of the white notes on the keyboard because if you take this note and you play it down here it's still the same note but down the octave so does this make sense? Hi, this is Roger Sanchez. Hi, this is Lenny Fontana. Hey guys, this is Jackie. Hi guys, Amber D here. Hi, I'm Paul Maddox. This is Saytech. Hi, this is Kyle B, and you're watching Mix Masters TV, where you can access world class producers in your studio every single day. Mix Masters.